Hey guys, welcome back. So we've been working on the car for a while. Let me uh, zoom that out. And I wanted to show you guys where we're at. So basically at this point, a lot of the wiring is complete or at least operational. There's a little bit of tidying up to do. You can see like a little bit messy. Uh, back here, it's even more messy, but it's just not, we're getting every, we're making sure everything works and get labels and we'll tidy it up at the end. All right, let's jump into this. So at this point, the only thing left is the power wires for the ECU and then all the wires for the ECU. So the ECU has nothing. You can see our standalone just sitting down here, nothing hooked up. Still gotta do that. And then we still gotta run power to like injectors, coils, VVT, things like that. Uh, let me show you what does work. All right, and I don't have labels, so I'm not gonna remember some of this. That's our 13.8, I remember that. Put this wheel on. Okay, so here's our 13.8. That's headlights. They both work. Very good. Also, here's our amp meter. We got that going. Check this out. We turn the headlights on. We can see how much power they pull. That's kind of nice. So you know they worked. Here's our next one. We're going to do the corner lamps. Turn the headlights off. There's corner lights. I eh, can't really see much, but you can see it on the amp meter. So that's cool. Those are front and back. So basically the bumper lights on the front, the headlight corner lights, and then the rear tail lights. Are all work there on that switch. Pretty nice. I don't really remember if this one does anything. Oh, that's the gauges. Yeah, we can always do that one more time. All right, so there's our gauges. They all look good. This switch, I don't remember. Yeah, I don't think that does anything. This one is fan automatic, and we know that because it's got the blue light for auto. This is manual. Watch this. This spout fan is absurd running at 17 volts. As you can see, it's pulling about 20 amps of power. Holy crap. I can actually feel the breeze somehow blowing around my feet when I turn that fan on. I'll show you guys later. You can actually stand behind the car, like uh, behind the rear bumper, and feel the fan. It's absurd how much air this fan moves. Um, let's see what's this one. Oh, that's our wideband. It says sensor because I don't have the sensor plugged in, but that turns on. I believe this is like fuel spark and... I don't remember what this third one is. None of these are hooked up. Let's see. Let's go this way. What does this do? God, I should have... I got to put labels. That's our electric water pump. Let's see if you can hear it. Anyway, that's working. Pretty cool. This one, I don't really remember. Looks like nothing. Oh, that works. Okay. Can you hear that? I just turned it on. Turned it off. So that's a valve that opens and closes uh, water flow to our transmission cooler. Now in the future, this is going to be on a, uh, in the future it'll be computer controlled, but for today it's on a switch. Uh, don't remember if this does anything. No, no. That one's spare. Here's our starter. So we can actually hit the starter. I'll show you guys that real quick. Now it's kind of weird. We only have like three spark plugs installed and one of them's not installed. But nonetheless, check it out. You'll get to see the current. So you can see how many amps the starter pulls and then our battery voltage. All right, y'all ready? There we go. It sounds weird. Of course, it's only got, it's got a plug out, so I don't normally start it like that. Anyway, starter works. That's pretty cool. Pulls like 120, 130 amps, something like that. But uh, yeah, a lot of the stuff on this panel is coming to life. Essentially, the only things that are left are fuel spark, VVT, and probably one or two other things. That's mostly it. Most of this stuff's actually working now. So I'm going to jump out and show you some of that. Okay, let's just turn the fan on. I don't know, it's hard to capture airflow in a video, but we got to do that. We got to try. Yeah, this thing is ridiculous. Oh, one more thing we got done. Let's see, we'll kick on some lights. Give us, show you that while we're back here. Here's our tail lights. So we also got our charging plug on. 
Here's the charge plug. So this is just dangling. It can actually be tucked up here. It will be able to be tucked out of view. But that's how we plug in to charge the car. We still got to build our charger, but just a 10 second overview. So I have this supply that goes to 50 amps at 15 volts. And we were going to use these for the 17 volt system. But what I just realized was I could actually set this up to do constant current, constant voltage at say 18 volts or 18 and a quarter and use it as a battery charger. So we had it rigged up and, it, and just to test it, it does get warm. We had to put a fan here to kind of cool this thing off because it's just sitting there with a heat sink but no fan. Other than that, it actually worked. So we may use those and this kind of like build a little system to be able to charge the car, like fast charge it. Because at the track, you know, this battery, I forget the specs, but you can charge this thing at least like 1C, which would be 100 amps. So we could totally build a charger to plug. I think these guys are rated up to 22 amps. So like, say you ran them at like 15 amps, three of them would be 45. So say bump it up to 50 and have a 50 amp charger. That's half C roughly. So, cause these are 105 amp hour cells. So anyway, we might do, uh, might build something like that. Cause it would be nice that after you make a pass, like park the car for five or 10 minutes and plug in and actually get some charge. So you don't have to worry about battery. But uh, yeah, there's the tail lights, charging plug. Let's go to the front of the car. You see the corner lights, the headlights. Like I said, all this is hooked up. Here's the other side. Probably not super exciting, but let me tell you, I've been working on this. Today is Saturday filming. I think I've been working on this for a week. Just pretty much every day I get off work, I come up here and, you know, drill holes, install grommets. Like, just little stuff you don't think about, but like, way down in there, there's a grommet. Firewall, there's another one. There's another one in the firewall. I made this one for the wideband. So I put it in its own separate harness uh, because widebands get replaced, sensors go bad, people upgrade widebands. I didn't want to have that tied into the rest of the harness. There's loom over here, which uh, actually did two of them. The big ones for wiring, but the little one I ran a gauge. Oh yeah, all my gauges I had to run all those sensor wires. We tried to keep those separate from uh, ECU or any other wiring. I guess the only exception is I ran a few wires through that, but uh, there's plenty of room to fish stuff in and out if you need to. So, yeah, here's some plugs. Get the camera down in here. These are like some high amp quick connects. I had to solder the wires, which I didn't like, but these are super compact and high current. I think those are like 100 amp rated or something. Uh, anyway, that's our water pump and our uh, cooling fan. And the plugs are male and female, so you can't get them backwards. And the polarity, you can't do that backwards either. There's that valve we were talking about earlier. That's in line with our trans cooler. So the trans cooler's back there. That valve is in line, so it allows us to open and shut coolant flow. So essentially, eventually it'll be computer controlled, but for now, you'll have a trans temp gauge in the car. So like say the transmission's up to temperature, but we're about to do our burnout and then race, we'll open that valve and have max cooling for the transmission. But if we need to warm it up, you can shut the valve. So kind of a nice feature, but like I said, down the road, it'll be computer controlled. Same thing with the cooling fan on the water pump. Like, yeah, the cooling fan pulls essentially 20 amps at 15 volts. So it's a shit ton of power. It's like 300 plus watts of power and it's not necessary. So it'll have an auto system and it'll be way better down the road, but we're going to get this bitch running. And that's the point. I hope you guys are seeing what I'm seeing. This thing's about ready to run. I mean, the cooling system, basically just pour coolant in. Fuel system, pour fuel in. It, pretty much all the fluids, are, we gotta bleed the brakes, but like, man, it's close. And electrically, the car works except for the uh, engine. The engine's all that's left. I think that's all that's left. We're gonna skip, like, uh, you can see a sensor over here that doesn't have a plug. There's another one over here, doesn't have a plug. So there's a few cases like that where, you know, oil temp, trans temp, there's a lot of sensors a lot i don't know somewhere between four and probably six or eight that are on the car that are not wired up but in almost every case i have it on a gauge so we're going to save the rest of that for a future upgrade or whatever we really want to get this thing running we're coming up on at the time of filming this video we're coming up on thanksgiving so gonna have a break for thanksgiving some family stuff looking forward to that but yeah race car is getting built um in fact the day's still young so after this video, we're going to go back to work and we're going to continue doing, uh, basically we got to sit down and go through the MS3 Pro, uh, wiring, make sure we know what we're doing there. Cause 
I have the plugs, like these are bare plugs. I've never used these. I usually bought the, uh, you can buy these in a pigtail. That's what I've always done. But this time we bought the plugs with crimp connectors. So there's pros and cons to that. But uh, one of the big benefits is we only have to run the wires we need. And on my old system, like it would have, you know, eight fuel injectors, eight ignition coils. Every single thing had its own wire and half of them we didn't even use. So this way, it'll only be the wires we use, which is kind of, which I think is quite nice actually. So we got to put a little bit of thought into that, uh, but not, but we're just going to get this done. Um, hopefully this isn't as horrible. I don't think it's going to be that bad. Get that wired up and then, uh, hell at that point, it's basically fluids and fire it up. We will have to do a tune. Now there's something on this computer that would probably run it, but, uh, my plan is to go find whatever the latest firmware, software, tuner studio, all that kind of stuff. Get all that stuff kind of up to date. And then uh, basically start from scratch and just put together our own our own setup. Because some stuff would be the same, but we changed a ton of stuff. And I don't want to like bake in any old settings that were wrong. I'd rather just start clean. So that's what we're going to do. So that'll, that'll take a little time uh, just to kind of brush up and make sure we're doing all that right. But uh, yeah. Once the tune's on there, it's going to be time to, uh, I guess we'll have to, I think the one thing that we will have to do when all, when it's basically ready to start, one thing we're probably going to do is take the fuel pump belt off and hook a drill up to the fuel pump and actually spin it over and prime the fuel system. We could just do that by turning the starter motor over. I don't know, maybe we'll do that. But it seems like it would take a while to prime because it's going to have to pump, you know, the system's dry. It would take a while to prime that. So we will probably hook a drill up and do that that way just for uh probably probably better make sure we got also i guess make sure we could test technically i just thought of this so if you do it that way you could actually do a fuel pressure test and if it does leak fuel you don't have an engine running at the same time you have your fuel leak that sounds actually like a good enough reason to do it just for that um and i will mention i don't know if i said this on video yet the car is built for methanol but we're going to do our initial test on e85 now we are definitely going to run methanol no doubt. However, this is a brand new fuel system. What if there's like a fuel leak? 100 to 1, I would rather have E85 spraying somewhere than methanol spraying somewhere. You know, if you, uh, anyway, methanol is dangerous. So it makes sense to start off with the 85 we'll break in the fuel pump, we'll get the motor running. Uh, there's a lot of other stuff. Like I said, you could have a fuel injector leaking, a hose, a fitting. I mean, God knows what. So it'll be a good test just to make sure that, you know, that the whole system is good go ahead and get it running i know how to tune on e85 so there's no like no issues there make sure it runs and drives and everything's okay and uh we'll see we may go to the track a little bit on e85 uh it's not like it's e85 is not going to hold this car back for a while but it will do better on methanol so we'll probably do some basic stuff on e85 just make sure it's solid and then it's getting switched over to meth anyway Video got a little longer than I thought, but yeah, making some real progress. This thing is very close to uh, being a running, driving car, so can't wait. All right, guys, y'all got any questions or anything, feel free to leave comments. Uh, I do get comments on most of my videos, and it's always cool seeing what you guys are up to and what y'all think, and I've gotten some good ideas of things to change, things to test, better ways to do stuff, and I'm always grateful for that. Uh, always looking to make this car better. All right, guys, till next time. Y'all take it easy.